every week I keep saying that I'm going to go come to the viewer comments and give a bit of feedback because there are loads of uh, comments coming in every week on whether it's YouTube, whether it's on Twitter, whatever it is. So I'll just run through a couple of them and uh, I mean just little snippets because there are so many I can't get through them all. The first one was um, Patrick Hickey. He was clarifying a tweet or a video we had last week with Michael Verney about Aidan and Jason McCarthy who would have both appeared for Clare in the last couple of years. He says Aidan and Jason are brothers. Love the Clare blashing from a tip man getting old Shane. So he's answer answered one question about the fact that the lads are brothers and he kind of follows it up with the fact that I'm a Clare basher of which I've been critical of Clare over the years for sure for not backing up that All-Ireland but I don't know if it's Clare bashing certainly not for the fun of it James O'Halloran actually he was in a conversation uh, on the back of one of the YouTube videos and he said 100% bashes Clare at every opportunity off the ball last year called most of the cl Clare players club hurlers and if given a whiff to talk about 2013 will hammer the nail in of how lucky he thinks the team was to win in All-Ireland I didn't say most of the team I said there's probably five brilliant players there's probably five very good players and then probably the rest are maybe uh, of club standard and like at the time when I said it I believed it I still believe it uh, I still believe that it was true then but maybe this year some of the players will improve maybe the way Lohan has set the team up will suit them better so far it's looking so good but um, it's not just bashing them for the sake of it like they did look a really really ordinary team but uh, they have won plenty of Munster games in the last couple of years, as someone else said in a comment. I didn't actually put that one down. So credit where it's due, they've actually won a good few games in Munster in the last few years. But, you know, I mean, last summer to get absolutely hammered by Tip and Limerick in consecutive weekends. You know, what have you done for me lately? Uh, next comment then, Shane O'Keefe. We were talking about, myself and Verdi, we were talking about players that get fouled an awful lot. And Shane O'Donnell, on the back of his performance against Dublin, he was the one being spoken about. And I kind of threw up, threw out Colin Fennelly as someone who, you know, we, we can all picture him just soloing up the centre and getting pulled or dragged down, or else as he's turning, people trying to bundle him up and pull him to the ground. Um, but Shane O'Keefe said, Fennelly fouls his opponents as much as he gets fouled himself. So I'm not really sure that that's true. I can think of him, you know, chasing back, tackling his man, getting hooks in. I'm not really sure he fouls that often. So I'd be interested to hear people's thoughts on that. Uh, next comment was Adrian McGrath. And uh, this was this is obviously to com comes back to the rules again and th the application of them over the weekend and all the red cards and all that type of stuff. But he goes, if you want to diminish holding and pulling, start by policing steps properly. That would reduce the benefit of carrying the ball into contact, which would reduce the value of running styles and increase the value of longer deliveries. There is a sense that teams who want to deliver perfect ball have to be facilitated, increase the price for holding onto the ball. I definitely think there's a lot to be said for that comment from Adrian because, because I, well, the big thing is I think referees let away steps uh, too much. Um, if that was policed, even this talk of the, the new motion that was going to be put forward, that it'd be changed to two steps rather than four to five steps, two seconds rather than four to five steps that you're allowed to hold on to the ball. It, it's... I wouldn't go for the two seconds thing, but it's just the fact that it's clearly an issue that players are getting away with, with, with far more steps. I mean, even if you think of, there are certain players that they come out with the ball, and if you're running with a bit of conviction, I think, and you've got the hurley cocked as if you're ready to strike it, I think you tend to get away with it. Um, but yeah, the, the flip side is, when you're getting tackled and harried by people, there is the kind of, the art of the half foul where I'll just pull your hand for a second. And if you blow a player up when his hand has been impeded, I mean, number one, no one wants the game stop for that, but you can't penalise the player for it. And there's this whole thing about, you know, the count step kind of goes back to zero if you're being fouled. So there's a balance to be found there. Yeah, I just think, I think referees, if they did pull players up for, for steps a bit better, there are certain times when you see lads do 10 or 12 steps and my sympathies are with the defender who's done a lot to hold his man up and then still he has to watch his man take another couple of steps and strike the ball over the bar. Uh, I don't think that's right. Um, Mega Mega Man 1 came in with a comment about the Galway footballers and this is obviously to do with them being night and day in 2020 compared with some of the dour stuff we saw last year. Galway haven't changed overnight. This is the way we play in Galway from knee high. Kevin's style while success was limited, is alien to Galway's players, Kevin Walsh, obviously. The reason why the change is sudden is that all PJ Park Joyce has done is to make the players play naturally. Tume is a kip with a SH1T pitch. 
Pierce Stadium was built as home for both hurlers and footballers, a decision North Galway still has difficulty accepting. In Galway football, there is a kind of northwest divide, partly because of the Republic's biggest lake, with the North having arrogance bordering on confidence, who believe there should be no city, west or Ireland, island players. Carfin aside, I think there are the same number of City West and North clubs in the top two divisions, so there is a similar enough standard between the regions, obviously with the exception of the history-making juggernaut. So, I mean, I wouldn't know the ins and outs of the the uh, rivalries within Galway, but let me know what you think. <clears throat> That's mega, mega man anyway. Uh, Hefo67, I haven't seen the Galway footballers bar a few highlights, but I have been wondering if the defensive-based approach under Walsh has given them skills which will aid them now, uh, now that they're applying a more attacking approach uh, under Joyce. Like, you learn a skill, you have a skill, question mark. Fair point, yeah. That um, maybe it was the case that Kevin Walsh was able to put in a great defensive structure, even though at times they conceded. I mean, look at the goals that Mayo scored last year in the qualifier in Limerick. Um, but the flip side is maybe defensive responsibility was hammered into an awful lot of players. Maybe there's a residual benefit you know, because um, actually this is something even in Hurling that uh, Eamon O'Shea is often credited for Michael, but partially for Michael Ryan's All-Ireland in 2016 for the work he did in the previous three years again, the players like um, interchanging their movement, that type of stuff. And that Ryan coming in next year was that perfect balance of he brought in a bit more directness, a bit more ignorance in the approach. And, and obviously when you say that in GEA sense, it's obviously meant as a positive that it was that perfect blend of the two. The players still had the free-flowing stuff kind of beaten into them, but at the same time, the other approach mixed with it. And you might see that with Galway this year, so I'd be very curious to get your thoughts on that. So that was a very good comment. Actually, Hefo had another one about the Cork hurlers. The current Cork hurling, uh, Cork team remind me of Tip around the middle of the decade. On their day when they click, they can beat anyone, but they have plenty of off days. Even within games, they can be superb at one point and then go off the boil for periods. There's a dramatic difference between their best and their worst. Tip are the same. Look at how Kilkenny teams under Cody always seem to hit a certain standard and it's rare for them to dip below it. I know that's a very high bar. That's true. And I mean, that's the whole thing that Cody's teams are um, built on. That application, he calls it genuineness, spirit. I mean, these are the words you hear all the time. So I think if you were to get into the team, those things are held higher than, than natural skill. And maybe that's the difference between how a Cork or a Tip team is picked ahead of a, a Kilkenny team, because effort can be the exact same every single day. Whereas some days skill works, some days flashes of class are, are shut down. Whereas, and you, you hear the, the phrase, hard, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. So. I mean, that's the thing about reaching a certain standard every day, that it, it should never change. You can still get beaten, of course you can, especially if the other team works hard. And maybe that's why Tip, when they won those All-Irelands in 10, 16 and 19 against Kilkenny, the work rate was just as high as Kilkenny, and then the class was able to come through. Now, I'm sure not every Kilkenny player or person will agree with that, because there are times when they've obviously outclassed every other team also. Maybe that's the thing for Cork. Unbelievable last year in the first half, again. well, unbelievable in parts of last year's quarterfinal against Kilkenny, left scores behind them, and then just complete fade out, absolute fade out, and weren't probably able to match the abrasiveness of Kilkenny, um, but let me know your thoughts on that, because it's an interesting one. Uh, another one, um, one, uh, oh, geez, Hefo 67 yet again, when Desi Hutchinson gets summer ground under his feet, he'll be impossible to catch. In the first half, he was operating on the worst part of the pitch. This is in Thurless. There was a lot of water. Lot, there was a bit of standing water in that part of the field. Surface water and all. He still um, he still looks speedy. He's like a bullet. Uh, he definitely is. And we've seen it for Bally Gunner. And possibly take him. I mean, who knows during the summer when that ground is hard. I'm not sure what cornerback it would be able to keep into him if he gets the ball in the front foot solo and up the middle. So it's early days. And... Uh, He's definitely a player that's going to have to be reckoned with. Uh, Shane Power, no mention of Connor Prunty in the game. He was absolutely unbelievable in the second half, especially, and by far the man of the match. Anyone he was on had little or no effect in the game. He was superb. <clears throat> Actually, it was a case of mistaken identity. He possibly should have got the yellow card for fouling John McGrath rather than Gleeson, uh, which was Gleeson's first yellow card. But um, I think we've waxed lyrical about Connor Prunty pretty much every time we talk about Watford. 
definitely a huge fan interviewed him it's on the our game playlist search his name there if you can't just find it by scrolling down but yeah excellent player and like really good against patrick horgan the first day out also yeah big fan big fan definitely deserves to be mentioned uh, another comment from James O'Halloran. Can anyone explain, please, uh, how Barrett's wasn't a red card? He punched out and connected. How can you excuse that? Um, presumably talking about him making contact with Desi Hutchinson, but uh, I wouldn't see it as punched out. I would see it as leaning out the, leaning out the arm, catching a lad across the side. Minimal enough stuff. I mean, I wouldn't be massively into Kevin Moore and getting a red card for for hitting Jason Ford and. I definitely wouldn't be into a red card for for Carl Barrett there either, and uh, I'm sure Tip will appeal it. Um, comment in uh, from an unusual uh, username, JPX-ST180S. So there'll be no fear of Cork. You'd be a fool to write a Cork team off. Semi-finals for the All Ireland this year. Uh, his prediction is Limerick, Cork, Galway, Waterford. Yeah, so he's ruling out Tipperary there. He's ruling out. Um, He's, ru- he's ruling out Clare, uh, he's got Cork in there, Wexford ruled out, which is a big one, yeah, and Kilkenny, of course. So some big teams left out of the picture there. Very interested to know what you think would be the, the four semi-finalists, so comment under the video and let me know. And then uh, a good one from Jimmy Mayo Football. He was uh, commenting on the Hurland Talk video from Monday where we reviewed the weekend's action, myself and Michael Verney. Two absolute Muppets with no life. Yeah, he might be on the money with that one. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.